Kiwi Bank sells itself as a bank made for New Zealanders by New Zealanders. And we're told that the ownership won't change in terms of being New Zealand after NZ Post announced its plan to sell 45% of Kiwi Bank to the Accident Compensation Corporation Fund and the Super Fund for a total of nearly half a billion dollars. The offer values Kiwi Bank at $1.1 billion. You will have heard David Tripe, if you were listening after five, saying he doesn't think that's enough. But New Zealand Post Chairman Sir Michael Cullen says he first spoke to Prime Minister John Key about the idea of a partial sale of Kiwi Bank back in 2014. I asked him this afternoon after the announcement was made what Mr Key's reaction was. Basically, I think he thought it was a good idea. Um, he reminded us about the government policy, that there was to be no partial privatisation or privatisation of, of Kiwi Bank. Uh, but, of course, the Superfund and uh, ACC, which subsequently came into the picture, um, are both government-owned funds. So this is merely, a, in a sense, a rearranging of the shareholding in Kiwi Bank between various Crown-owned assets post uh, the Superfund and ACC. It's rearranging in the short to medium term, but in the long term, is there the possibility of privatisation through the back door? Because the super fund, for example, doesn't hold shares forever. So if they decide to divest themselves of their shareholding, what happens to it? Well, let's track back just one point. I mean, there's, there's no such guarantee at the current time either. Um, there is no legislation which keeps Kiwi Bank in government hands. It's merely 100% subsidiary of post which with the concurrence of the government, in effect, could be sold at any time into the private sector. It's government policy that stops that happening. What the deal provides is um, the super fund and ACC, because they're investment funds, have to have access to liquidity, which means they have to be able to sell if they need to. I mean, no investment fund has a one-way bet um, under any circumstance. But what the deal provides is that they can't exercise any right to sell shares for at least five years. If they do exercise that right, uh, then the government has the right to purchase the shares back from them. And the government has stated it's their clear policy that they would exercise that right to buy back the shares. And I'm sure that uh, even more so, <laughs> if we could put it that way, any likely alternative government would be uh, certain to, to buy back those shares. So, so, so what you're as far as we can guarantee you, everything, what, it's at least as much guaranteed as it is at uh, present. Uh, okay. It's a matter of government policy. So what you're gently and diplomatically saying is that a Labour government... Although, goodness gracious, we both remember Labor's record on asset sales previously. But the current... Well, that was the 1980s. It didn't yes, happen at all from 1999 right. to 2008. No. Yeah, okay. we, we bought back Air New Zealand and railways, you may recall. <laughs> OK, hold on a sec, though. We're looking for concrete reassurances. And what you're saying is the Labor Party at the moment are not ideologically predisposed towards asset sales. And this government has given assurances that they won't sell Kiwi Bank, right? And, so and what I'm so that's John, the is, protection. Is, no, no what I, yeah, I'm, I'm saying actually it's a little, little stronger than that, that that is all the protection there is at the moment. Um, th this, this deal doesn't change that protection. In the end, the ability or not to privatise in whole or part uh, an asset like uh, Kiwi Bank depends upon government policy um, because the, uh, the law that needs to be changed would be required to change the ownership of New Zealand Post, not the ownership of Kiwi Bank. It's a 100% owned subsidiary, therefore it's not covered by the SOEs Act. Michael Cohen, so in short, uh, Kiwi Bank would be no safer under the new ownership configuration than it is under the current ownership configuration, neither more nor less safe. I also asked Sir Michael Cullen what New Zealand Post would do with the money if they do get $495 million. Banks growing uh, are capital hungry and Kiwi Bank has been a very fast growing bank over the last 12 years. Secondly, we look to keep back some money uh, to add to our current uh, if you like, cash pile, which we have realised from um, the sale of, of non-core assets. Uh, and that is to enable us to engage in effective restructuring of the mail and communication side so that we can switch it to a customer-led parcels business with a mail offering. In the past, it's been essentially a letters business with, with uh, a parcels uh, offering. And then clearly the government expects some kind of special dividend. Um, and and I would, if I was in the same position as Bill English, I would expect to see some return to the government as the ultimate shareholder of New Zealand Post out of this. So but remember that the essential transaction is a transaction within the Crown accounts. Um, uh, when you look at the consolidated Crown accounts at the end of the year, this makes no essential difference to them.
You talk about the government expecting a special dividend. What are we talking about? What size that's dividend? To be, that's to be negotiated between New Zealand Post and, and the government. So Gosh, that, no is, that is material though, isn't it? Well, it's material, but only in the sense that it affects, if you like, the government's uh, fiscal position uh, in the short term. It affects how much we have as a cash pile uh, to undergo our own uh, restructuring in the mail and communications side. So Michael Cullen, so there we are, David, who contacted us before uh, the news with some feedback about this special dividend. Yes, it is going to be paid. That was New Zealand Post Chairman Sir Michael Cullen. Finance Minister Bill English says Kiwi Bank would remain 100% government owned after the partial sale. And he says that won't change even if the NZ Superfund or ACC decided to sell their stakes. No sale can occur without government agreement. So in this case, it's a right of first refusal. Uh, this government, if it was offered, the bank would buy it back. Um, wouldn't sell it out. To, wouldn't sell it outside government. So, but that's always been the case. I mean, Kiwi Bank uh, is 100% government owned because successive governments have had that as policy. If a future government changes the policy, well, they'll have the debate with the public. But uh, our policy is clear. Bill English, he says the sell down will impact on Kiwi Bank's growth prospects in a positive way. We would expect that the, the change in the ownership structure means it's easier for them to get access to capital to grow. So I think the, the, they'll be making commercial decisions which will probably push them in the direction of growth. And you've got a couple of significant government-owned investors who have the ability to, to find that capital.